You may be familiar with this always pan because Instagram is incessant. Hello everyone, my name is Lisa and I'm the Viet Vegan because I'm Vietnam Vegan and today I'm going to do the long awaited always pan review slash is it worth the space video of all of my possessions in the world. At least like 60% of them are kitchen related. Every time I move, people are like, how do you fit so much into your kitchen? The answer is, I don't know. Anyway, I have a series called, Is It Worth This Space? Because I have an excessive amount of appliances. So it's an ongoing series that is like kind of a review, but kind of not because I'm not trying to convince you to buy one thing or another. It's just whether or not this particular appliance is worth the space in your life. Recently, I did a bread slicer video, not very popular, but that's fine. I'm very passionate about the bread slicer. I've done an air fryer and I've done a juicer before. So today I'm gonna be talking about the always pan. There was like a flood of Instagram, promos from other influencers where influencers like me and I did get sent this pan, were sent this pan to try out with no obligation to post, no obligation to do anything. I think some people were sponsored. I am not sponsored. I appreciate when companies just send you a product and they believe so much in the product that they don't require you to make any sort of review or specific requirement for posting to receive the pan. That just speaks to me that they believe in their product. I am humbled that they think that my opinion is worth spending the shipping and the cost of the product on. So first, let me just talk about the the aspects of the always pan and like why people are so obsessed with the always pan. First off, it's beautiful. I can't deny it's a beautiful pan. They come in a bunch of different colors. They're very aesthetic. They're very light. They're about three pounds. Although I have a friend who has like the first edition of the pan, which was a lot heavier. And I think for her, the pan cost under a hundred or was around a hundred dollars. Currently the pan sits at 195 Canadian dollars. And I can't remember whether or not that includes shipping. $200 <laughs> for one pan that you have to baby. I don't know. I have high standards for something that costs that much money. I assess, is it worth the space based on a bunch of different things? Cost, look, functionality, whether or not I actually use it and if it actually lives up to the hype. For $195, this pan says that it can replace eight things in your pantry. I've written them down because I'm not gonna remember them all. Although some of them I'm just kind of like, is that, does that really count? It says it replaces one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so it's like eight, okay, okay, okay. They write, it will replace your fry pan, saute pan, steamer, skillet, saucier, 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 I don't, saucier, saucepan. What's the difference between a saucier and a saucepan? Future Lisa, insert that here. A nonstick pan, a spatula, and a spoon rest. I have many feelings about this. So with this pan, you're supposed to be able to braise, sear, strain, saute, fry, boil, serve, and store. It's 2.6 quarts in capacity. It's compatible with all cooktops, which is really cool for induction, coil, flame, all that kind of stuff. There's a stainless steel basket and it's three pounds. So under the cooking care or how to care instructions, there are like four main things that it wrote. So one is that it's not oven safe. I think it would be if it weren't for the nonstick pan and there's like a kind of like silicone coating on the handle. You have to cook on low to medium heat. You can't use metal utensils on it when you're cleaning you're supposed to only use a soft sponge. It looks a little nasty now, but they send this natural vegetable loofah sponge. I had some people ask me if this is vegan. It comes from a plant. It's a loofah plant. Sea sponges are not vegan because they're like the skeletal whatever of a sea sponge, but this is a vegetable, it's a loofah. I have many feelings about this. I am someone who cooks every day and cooks at least two to three times a day. And I'm very experienced with cooking. $200? <laughs> like 195 Canadian, however much it is US. I think it's like one something US. Every time I look at the pricing, they jack it up a little bit more. Cause the last time I checked this in November, it was 180 and now it's 195. I don't know what's happening that they keep increasing the price and why they keep doing that. There are sales, which I can see. A lot of sets that I see, cookware sets, especially for beginner cookers or um, for medium to high cookware, you'll get like, a 10 piece or an eight piece uh, set for $200. I understand that this is supposed to replace all of those things. It's not a lot of space. It's 2.6 quarts. For one person or maybe two people, I think that this 
would be feasible if you have a small kitchen, for example, and you don't have room for all the different pots and pans. I understand the appeal of like a one, a pan that does it all, a multi-purpose pan, that's what this is. In my experience, things that have multi-purpose tend to be strictly average at all of those things. It's like the jack of all trades, master of none type situation. I have rarely encountered something that is so amazing at all the different things that it promises to do. With that said, there are things that I really like about this pan, and then there's things that I really dislike about this pan. You can judge whether or not it's worth it to you because I know a lot of people who have this pan who love this pan have had no issues but I received this pan in September and within like two months the nonstick surface was not that great anymore. I will say the first two months of cooking with this pan were awesome. Nothing stuck to it. It was pretty awesome. You do have to baby the surface a little bit and I cook everything on medium to medium low heat. So my oven goes from low to high and low is like a one and a high is about a nine and I never really cook higher than a six so the six is just slightly past medium but it's still pretty like medium low having had other delicate pans before I have very little patience for delicate pans I understand that nonstick services can be damaged a lot more easily than a cast iron pan for example but after cooking on a cast iron pan I'm just used to being able to like use metal things to like scrape or whatever. I don't have to baby my cast iron pan. So I've been cooking with this pan pretty frequently for about five months. The first two months I was using it pretty much every day. Really loved it. I don't think I was cooking anything that was like horrible for the pan. I was always using oil. I always use wooden utensils on it. I always cleaned it pretty gently, but eventually I'll insert some like shaky clips here from my phone, but eventually I got this like weird oil polymerized coating. And I recognize that that happens when you use oils that will, well, I guess polymerize at a high heat. They recommend that you use high smoke point oils, so oils that will do well in high heat because it'll conduct heat so quickly and so fast. I use canola oil for my cooking. Canola oil, vegetable oil, peanut oil. I use oils that handle high heat well. The fact that like canola oil had that weird sticky, whatever to the pan was really surprising to me because that happens on my cast iron pan but that's supposed to happen on a cast iron pan because it gets so hot and that's how it adds to the non-stick aspect of a cast iron pan. I really struggled to clean that off. I tried using a lot of soap. I tried soaking it. I tried using the loofah, just kind of like trying to scrub at it really gently. Nothing was working until a bunch of people recommended that I use baking soda and water. So baking soda is like a very gentle abrasive. It is abrasive but it shouldn't be so abrasive to a pan that it completely destroys the coating. I put it on and I was fairly gentle. I was only using the loofah to scrape or to like rub at the oil part. And I was only really rubbing at the oil part to kind of get that off. And ever since I've done that, the pan is not super good at nonstick stuff. So I recently made pan fried bao in them. And the first batch of them, I used oil and all that kind of stuff. And the first batch like lifted okay-ish, but then the second batch, did not work super well. And this is supposed to be non-stick, especially if the cost is $200 for a non-stick pan. It better be like a fantastic non-stick pan. I've heard of other pans like the Ninja Foodie pan where you can use all these different utensils on it. I have yet to try it. I might buy one to, just to try it. That thing looks indestructible and you can use different utensils on it. You don't have to baby it. You can use medium to high heat, I'm pretty sure. And the fact that that can do that, but this can't, the Ninja Foodie pan is cheaper than this pan raised eyebrows. There's a couple different things of functionality that I think are a little weird design wise. I shared this in my highlight on my Instagram about this, but there are certain things about this pan that I think are just kind of like oddly designed or poorly designed. So the steamer basket is supposed to sit in your pan and you're supposed to be able to steam whatever you want. I've tried steaming dumplings in this before. They cooked okay-ish because the strainer sits so low in the pan, it caused the bottom to be soggy. You only can really fit less than two cups of water in this before it hits the bottom of the steamer basket. Depending on how long that you need to steam things, if you need to steam for longer than like 10 minutes, then you're gonna have a hard time with this pan. I have a steamer basket and I put in like a liter of water. I steam a lot of things like sticky rice or bao, that one you need to steam for 20 minutes. You can't really steam that in here without having to like lift it up, add more water and like let it come back up to heat again. But that kind of defeats the purpose of the steaming because you want that constant steam to happen in there. So I find that kind of difficult. 
um, in this steamer type thing. You're also supposed to be able to cook noodles and then strain them. I don't know, I think that's like a bit fussy for a thing that we already have that is perfectly great. You can pour water and noodles into a colander over the sink, strain those, and then put the colander back in the pan to like, you know, do whatever you gotta do. I just think the concept of straining your noodles in here and then lifting up, then you have a dripping thing of noodles. The only solution that I have is to put a plate underneath it, but then that's just like another dish that you have to do. If I'm making noodles or if I'm making pasta or whatever, I just leave the colander in the sink or like hanging on top of the sink or I put it back over the pan. But if I'm gonna do that, then I have to bring the pan to the sink, lift the noodles out, pour out the water and then put this back in. But then I have to keep holding this because it's like too low to sit in the, in the thing and then like I have to put it on a plate. It's just, it doesn't make sense to me. It's not functional for me. And if you wanna just steam stuff, which like I've tried before, you just steam the vegetables, then you lift it out and you're like, great, vegetables. But then you have to like pour this water into the sink. I'm sure there's like a better physics explanation for this, but when there's stuff in the water, I find that the water is less likely to slosh around, but if it's just water in the pan and I'm transporting the pan, the water is a lot more susceptible of splashing out. Maybe that's me being really fussy, but I just don't think that that is very functional. <laughs> I would just rather use a pot. If you're also heating up sauce, then do you just let the noodles sit out while you heat the sauce or do you use another pan? This is supposed to replace all the pans. They also have an addition of a steamer basket that goes on top and I think that'll replace the issues that you have with steaming this while this touches the bottom. However, I think it's like a $50 cost for a bamboo steamer basket and like, yo, bamboo steamer baskets are hella cheap, man. You can get one up Chinatown for like $10. Like they're not worth $50. I am both very cheap and also willing to shell out cash for good products. Like I have a Dyson vacuum cleaner. What else would we buy that was like really expensive? I have a $200 toaster, okay? I have a stand mixer. I bought a gooseneck kettle. I don't have a problem spending money on appliances or things in my house that are luxurious if they perform well. Like for example, I have an $80 water bottle. No water bottle should cost $80. However, this is so functionally amazing because the functionality of the insulated water bottle and just like everything about it is just great. The design is awesome. Anyway, this video is not about my water bottle. It's about this always pan. I don't think it's necessary. I don't, I don't like it. Having to like pull this out of the water that it's boiling in to like be able to grab it. I usually have to pick up the thing with like gloves or whatever, or like a, an oven mitt for it to not like hurt my hand, especially because it's steaming. It's just, it's not functional for me. <laughs> the rest of the pan is pretty good. The shape of the pan is really nice. I really like the high sides. I like the coloring. I like that there's like a handle and I like the shape of this and the feel of this. The spatula that it comes with is like a beechwood wooden spatula. It is decent to cook with. However, there's a couple design things that I think are like a little meh. I don't know. Maybe I'm just overly critical because it's a $200 pan, but I think that if something's going to cost $200, it better be awesome. This handle is heat safe, but it stops here. So this is not heat safe. And there's times where I've grabbed the pan and I burnt myself by touching this part just because the leverage of holding something I'm a five foot five Asian woman, okay? I am strong, but I'm not that strong. So sometimes I have to hold things a little further up the, the handle for me to be able to pick it up in terms of like actual just physics and leverage. But because this part is not heat safe, it freaking hurts. I feel like this is fairly obvious for a lot of people. And like, this is the same with my cast iron pan. This handle is not heat safe. There's nothing on it to keep you from burning yourself. So if you're touching it after cooking, it's hot. Personally, I don't understand why this is here if you can't touch it when it's hot. On my cast iron pan, it's barely a handle. It's mostly just so you can hang up the pot. But I don't think that th that's what this is for. This is designed specifically so you can hold it. It gets really hot, <laughs> okay? I really like the spout. I find that it's nice for pouring. It's on both sides for left-handed and right-handed people. I understand the functionality of this little inlet part. As you can see, there's like a little lip here for the spoon to rest on. So the spoon sits inside. <laughs> This is, why am I filming it like this? The spoon sits inside like this and then the hand, the spoon is supposed to be like a spoon rest that sits in there, right? But there have been times where I'm cooking and I'll stir. I don't think I'm stirring that vigorously, but sometimes if you don't want the sauce to burn, then you kind of have to like, you know, get in there. Things will splash through this lip and burn me. 
because I'm bad. If you cook and you leave the wooden spoon in there, I think that it's cool that it'll just drip back into the pan. But if you're closing the lid and you're cooking with the wooden spoon there, the moisture will kind of like seep into the wooden spoon and I can definitely see it degrading faster over time, especially if you're leaving it in the moisture like that. However, I do do that with, <laughs> I do do, I do that with like this spoon, for example, and it like has darkened and like worn down over time, but it is non-coated, whereas that one is coated. I also don't like that I can't use a metal whisk in here. So if I'm supposed to use this as a saucepan, I should be able to whisk my sauces or whisk my gravy or whisk my Alfredo sauce or whatever, you know, if I'm adding in a roux. You should be able to use a whisk, but you can't because you'll damage the, the thing. So I don't think this necessarily will replace a saucepan because I can't make most sauces in it. The other thing is this lid. Okay, first off, this lid makes a very satisfying sound if you ding it. It's very nice, I like that. Um, I like the domedness of it because I find that it captures and holds heat in there pretty nicely. I don't like this lid handle function. Okay, so this lid um, is heat safe just on this upper part, but this here is where it's no longer heat safe. And like, I have pretty small hands, okay? So even, even if I'm grabbing it, but like the tip of my finger is touching this part, it's hot. <laughs> And then I've burned myself multiple times because I'm just kind of like lifting it up and grabbing it. I don't know. I think maybe they need to make it bigger or they need to like extend the non, not the, the heat safe part a little lower. It's nitpicky, but again, it's a $200 pan. And I think that these are just kind of like poor design things that can be improved on, especially if you're asking people to spend that much money on it. And if it's supposed to replace all these different things, it says that you're supposed to sear, you're supposed to be able to sear or braise things with it. And with, that function of cooking, you need a higher heat, at least a medium high or like a decently hot medium heat. And if the company is saying that you shouldn't be using higher than medium heat on that, I don't know how you're supposed to be able to sear stuff. And the website says it's okay if it goes up a little bit, but just don't keep it there consistently so that you can sear your food. I get that, but again, I don't really think I was that hard on this pan and the nonstick coating is already gone because the oil like completely polymerizes on the pan, even though it's like a high heat oil. It's a very fussy pan. You have to really baby it. And I don't think the payoff is that great. For example, I have a cast iron pan and I've had this pan for at least 10 years. I haven't always been using it for 10 years, but it's a little bit of a learning curve. My seasoning on this pan is like now nearly indestructible. I might do a video on it later if a bunch of you keep asking me for it. <laughs> but I have a video on how I maintain my cast iron pan on my Instagram feed. It's a, one of my reels if you want to see how I maintain it. It was $20 and you can buy antique cast iron pans from flea markets, thrift stores, vintage markets, and those will have like like a 50 year seasoning that is indestructible. You do have to baby that pan in the sense that you can never put it in the dishwasher and you can't use soap. But other than that, you can use all utensils on it. It's good on all heat services barbecue, fire, stove, all that kind of stuff. Actually, I don't know if you can use it on an induction. And I like that as a vegan, I can get iron from it because I'm cooking on an iron pan. The cost, the functionality, and the practicality of a cast iron pan is just greatly out outweighs that of a, an always pan. The only downside is that it's hella heavy. <laughs> is it worth the space? I don't know. If this broke and I had to spend my money on it again, I probably wouldn't buy it. I think that there are plenty of nonstick pans out there that are a fraction of the cost that are way more functional. Maybe not as beautiful, but will cook all the things that you want to cook on it. I do really like the pan. I think that it's beautiful. <laughs> and I really wish that it lived up to the hype, but I don't think that it's worth $200. That's so much money. <laughs> all in all, it's beautiful. It's aesthetically great but it is expensive. It doesn't do all the things that it says that it's supposed to do. At least it doesn't do it well. Let me know what you think down below. Am I being too critical? When I posted this on Instagram, I got so many comments from people. A lot of people were like, oh my God, you saved me $200. And like, I feel bad because like, it's a woman BIPOC owned com company and it is beautifully designed. Their dishes and their flatware look very beautiful. I like that they stack, they're very aesthetic. Like this brand knows marketing and this brand knows aesthetic. I think I am too, much of a cook to find this functional in my kitchen. Again, you can buy like eight piece, 10 piece 
sets that are stainless steel, very well made from decent brands for $200. Please don't come for me. I really wanted to like this pan. I think for me personally, it just isn't worth the space. So let me know what you think about this pan. If you would buy this pan, is it worth the space to you? A lot of people have this pan. Let me know what your experience has been with it. Is it different from mine? Is it better? I would love to know good and bad. In an ideal world, people would spend that much money on this pan and be absolutely thrilled with it. And I think best case scenario, that is the case. That's not the case for me and I didn't spend money on it. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you guys have a delicious day. Bye.